Hey y'all, it's Andrew Couch here. In this Tire Tuesday video, we're gonna be going over the model time package, which a viewer recommended to me. I actually used it um, in my work because I've had, to, I've had to do a decent amount of forecasting stuff. And I thought the model time package was pretty interesting. Specifically, model time actually uses like the tidy models framework. So it's pretty cool to use, especially if you have a background with the tidy models. It also has some cool models such as Arima Boost and Profit Boost while also containing like the usual suspects such as Arima and uh, Profit. You can also use like TSLM models using their linear regression. So um, let's look at the model time package. I'll open this up. I'll call this tidy models, tidy forecast. Okay, uh, we'll load in tidy models. Uh, tidy verse model time and time tk so time tk will be uh the uh, the package that will give us our data set which will be bike sharing daily um time tk also adds a lot of like time series features for your modeling so it's definitely a package i'll make a video on in the future but i figured i'd make a quick video on i guess the model time framework so let's look at our uh, data frame, um, which is bike counts. So if we select, was it date is equal to DE day and then count, we have our, our bike counts for every day. If we do a basic plot, um, we can see, we can see that it's non-stationary. So we might have to do some differencing, which won't be too bad. Um, let's first, um, put this thing right there and then DF. Okay. There you go. So let's do some differencing first. Um, as for date, I'm going to do month forecast. So I'm going to say mutate, uh, was it year is equal to, I guess, Uber date year date and then month. You go to Uber date, month date. Um, I'm going to group by, uh, was it year and month? I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm also going to, let's see here. I'm going to mutate, um, the total. So total, I'll say monthly count is equal to some count. And also do the uh, min date. So min, I'll say date is equal to min date. Um, let's see here. And then I'll say like Uber date as date. Okay. Actually, do I do I even need that? Just that. So min date i'll say uh, uh month date okay cool um and then i'll ungroup that so select a uh, month date uh monthly count um i'll do a distinct um the reason why i did this thing basically is um i i just <laughs> am pretty bad with using luber date so I just want to extract like the, the first of every month with a daily count with the monthly count. So that's why we, we, why we did that. Then what we'll do is mutate our, we'll, uh, we'll make sure it's, um, in order, which it should be in order. Right. And I'll make the, uh, monthly change, which should be equal to monthly count minus, uh, lag monthly count n equals one. So we can see it's working. So, uh, we had an increase in 10,000 um, bike usages from the previous month. So I'll select the month date and monthly change, and then I'll drop the NA because that's bad for our model. Okay. So now that we have our monthly change, what we can do is plot this out again. So ggplot asx equals month date y equals monthly change and it should be pretty 
stationary. It still isn't very stationary. That might be a problem. We might just have to go with just aggregation by month. So let me try this out again. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Um, let's see here. DF. So let's see here. If we have our sum. I mean, you might not even have to difference it. So X equals month date. Y equals monthly count. Man, I, I think we still need to difference it. So I think that's fine then. Okay. So if we go back here. Drop an A. And we'll do that. Sweet. Then we fire D line. We have that. We can also add our GM point. Cool. Um, so now that I'm looking at this, I think we don't have enough data for it. So we'll just do daily change. I think that that's probably the most straightforward thing. So sorry about that. I know I'm going a little um, all over the place, but this is kind of just how I um, approached it. And I'll make it a little bit easier. So if we go to our DF, uh, what we can do is mutate count, uh, oops, mutate daily change is equal to count uh, minus lag count n equals one. Uh, mutate, okay. Plot it out. X equals date, Y equals daily change. GM1. Okay, so that makes it stationary. So I think daily change will be how we should be doing it. That's fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to just select date, daily change. Uh, drop the missing value. Uh, make sure date is still arranged. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Oops. So we'll say a uh, create data. Okay. Um, and make station stationary. Okay. So now let's actually do our modeling. So with our modeling, the main components of it is the model time table. And that's basically where we're going to be using a bunch of models, um, fitting it to our training set and then uh, predicting on our test set and also kind of looking at our forecast, our accuracy, and then refitting to the entire data set and forecasting in the future and giving it to our, you know, uh, giving it to our stakeholders or our managers. So let's start creating some models. Uh, I think I'm going to use what they did, the usual suspects. So ARIMA will probably do a linear regression and I'll use profit and I'll also use say like ARIMA boost. So I'll, I'll first do like an auto ARIMA model. So ARIMA model, ARIMA reg, uh, set engine auto ARIMA and then I'll fit it to daily change to date. Oh, now that I forgot, I totally forgot to create our uh, train test set. So let's do that first. So create train and test sets. So with our data set, we actually want to split it depending on its time. Luckily they have a uh, tidy model says initial time split. So we can give it our DF do an 80, 20 split and that's our split. I'll call us our training set. So I'll say train data and on our test data. And that's important that we use initial time split because, um, we don't want our, our test data to be something that we've already seen before. So if we actually look at our train data, I'll say type is equal to uh, train, then I'll bind rows to test data, mutate type is equal to test, and then plot this out. Uh, y equals daily change color is equal to, is equal to type. We can see how our train set will not have anything in our test set and our test set will not be seen before for any of the dates. 
and that's important. So if it was mixed up, we'd basically have a lot of data leakage. So our model would be basically be able to see like maybe not tomorrow's data, but it might see the day after tomorrow's data. And that can make it infer a lot of uh, things about it. So this is a good way how to make sure to not cheat um, using the initial time split. Um, I think this visualization actually really shows why it's important to do an initial time split. Um, so it's a pretty cool thing of why we use this different time series split. And it's not very hard to do. Um, one thing I think it's kind of interesting is you kind of don't need to set your seed because your proportion is kind of setting what um, what uh, samples will be using. Okay, so we have our training data. Um, we're gonna fit that to our uh, to our model. So data is equal to train data. Uh, we'll build a was it a profit model? So I'll say profit reg set engine to uh, profit and then fit daily change to date data is equal to train data cool um actually i'm gonna load in the did i load in the luber date package i need to load in the luber date package the library luber date okay and then i'm gonna do a tslm model or a linear model so um linear reg set mode to uh set was it engine to lm and then fit daily change um and with linear regression it can't handle dates so you have to convert your date to numeric and also going to add some monthly seasonal factors so i'll say uh, uh month date label is equal to true and i'll convert that to like an ordered factor so factor and our data will be our train data. So basically what I did is like convert, convert this to like a, a continuous variable, which would be like one, two, three, four, five. Then our month, I create a month, which will be a label. And I'll fit that to the model. Finally, I'll do like a uh, Arima boost, boosted model. So I'll say Arima boost. Um, I'll say, was it uh, tree? Depth will be like, now I'll just do like, was it uh, learn, learn rate is equal to 0 0.015 and I'll say min n is equal to two. Set engine to, was it Arima boost? I just want to make sure it's called Arima boost. Uh, auto Arima boost, there you go. So auto Arima boost. I obviously set the learn rate to the thing that they offered. I think that's kind of like a good way to do it just because you're only using uh, essentially date um but we'll do that so then i'll say fit daily change as dot numeric date plus factor month uh oops date label is equal to true data is equal to train data okay so we have our models oops what did i do linear that sets engine no date as dot numeric date no date or daytime verb oops what did i do oh and then i i also date plus as dot numeric date okay so we have our list of models um now what i'm going to do is use the main function which would be model time table add these models into it oops Profit model, TSLM model, Arena boosted model. And this creates a table of models. So I'll call this a uh, uh, forecast table. Great. So these models have only seen the train uh, set. So what we can do is model time and calibrate. And this will basically have it predict uh, onto our test data set and we can see what it's doing. So test data. Okay, so we have our, our little thing that says calibration. Um, we can also see what our, our ARMA models are doing. So when we're not boosting our errors, we have a uh, ARMA model with 002 or a Q of two. Uh, with our auto ARMA with XG boost, we can see how this changed with a P of two. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see it change like that. Uh, we can also see uh, 
uh, model time like accuracy and see our metrics. So, so some forecasting metrics we should be aware of is I think mean absolute error and mean absolute uh, was it uh, mean absolute scaled error. <laughs> so what I've been looking at is mean absolute scared scaled error. Essentially, uh, it's kind of the ROC AOC score of forecasting. So with MASE, if you have a score of one, it means that you're performing just as well as a naive forecasting model. So a naive forecasting model will just predict the value that happened the day before or the period before. So if you get a score that's lower than uh, one, that means you're outperforming the um, naive forecasting model, which I think is good. Especially since uh, naive forecasting models do have um, very low error. Um, as, if you don't account for like, scaling and um, stuff like that. So that's why uh, people generally don't use RMSC or root mean squared error. Um, they'll, they'll go for like, SMAPE, uh, MAPE, or MASSE. Great. So we have this thing right here. Uh, what we can also do is we can say model time forecast. And we have this cool little forecast with a confidence of low and highs. But what's really, I think, cool about it is you can have uh, model time comes with a, a plotting functions. So we can kind of forecast this. And we can say what is our actual uh, plot model time forecast and say actual data equals, equals a test data. So we can see our actual right here. Uh, we can see what our ARIMA with non zero mean It's just kind of predicting one value. We can see our LM has a little bit of variance but it's not really doing anything and then we can see this our profit model and then we can see our arima with non-zero mean so it's not doing great which is kind of interesting uh we can see what it's in, in any case it's doing anything weird um however one important thing is you should always try to refit your data because it might be able to detect the trend even better so what we can do is model time uh refit and we can refit it to our actual data set, which I believe we call it just DF, right? Uh, D, oops. So DF. So um, I just want to make sure we, yep, to DF. And then what we can do is model time forecast. And in this case, we'll say like H equals uh, seven. Our actual data is equal to DF. And we can plot this out to see what it's trying to do. So we can see what it's trying to do. Oops. Um, we can see here, we are detecting some type of trend, right? It's trying to do some type of jagged thing. It's, it thinks it's like towards the end of the week, it's going to be uh, slightly decreasing. And then after that, it's going to increase. That's what a profit does. It's basically following the same thing, but it's seeing less little um, seasonal issues. Our LM model is just predicting one thing. And then our updated arena model is predicting a little bit lower. So that's basically it for uh, today. I know we didn't really get a great forecasting model, but to be honest, forecasting is very difficult. Um, and a lot of times it's a lot of tweaking a lot of tuning, a lot of uh, looking at holidays, which I'm sure I'll start uh, working on uh, more videos about uh, for it. But I wanted to do a quick uh, video of kind of how to use the model time package, um, kind of mess around with it and just show how basically how simple it is and how it does a lot of the grunt work for you. So people can uh, work on their own forecasting projects. So with that said, uh, I'll see you guys next week and tidy on.